The definition of loving the game of basketball. Scotty Barnes is going to be a name that always comes to mind when I think about this. And when you combine his love of the game with his physical gifts and his basketball ability, you get a very special talent. Barnes has always had the talent. He's very talented to say the least, with a very high floor due to his physical gifts and his motor on top of the field for the game. But he's okay scoring potential in his rookie season that has taken his ceiling to new heights. And there have been some debates about how good Scotty can be, and I understand why, because he's a bit unconventional when it comes to the way he plays the game. Scotty Burns averaged 15.3 points a game, 7.5 rebounds a game, and 3.5 assists per game on a 55.22 shooting percentage and 35.4 minutes per game across 74 games as a rookie. I want to start by saying that playing 35.4 minutes per game across 74 regular season games in your first NBA season is very impressive because that's over 10 minutes per game compared to what he averaged in college and almost triple the amount of games played. One of the most difficult transitions rookies have to make in the NBA is making the transition to an NBA schedule. This is the first time they play 12 minute game quarters and this is also by far the longest basketball season they ever play. So it's a tough adjustment to make. It's why you usually see rookies hover around high 20s to low 30s minutes per game if they start in their rookie season. Now part of the reason Scotty had to play 35 plus minutes per game is the injuries the Raptors had on roster, but the fact that he handled those minutes well and didn't have a noticeable rough patch in the adjustments to it really speaks to his motor and work ethic. On top of adjusting well to a relatively new basketball schedule in his life, Scotty also showed real progression as a scorer. He was projected to be a play finisher transition guy as a scorer coming out of Florida State, but he showcased real scoring arsenal moves that intrigued me this season. He was a much better suited than I expected him to be. 52.4% of his field goal attempts were jump shots this season, which amounts to 6.6 attempts per game. He shot 37.4% on those jump shot attempts, which isn't a great number, but definitely really good for his standards compared to what he was doing before the NBA. And I'm actually just encouraged by a lot of things when it comes to his shooting ability. He did shoot 40.9% on his mid-range jump shots on 2.1 attempts per game, which isn't a large sample, but it's enough for me to be encouraged by the potential of it. His 3-point numbers weren't great at 30.1% on 2.6 attempts per game, but his confidence was encouraging enough for me to see it as a step in the right direction for his NBA career moving forward. Now, I don't think that Scotty will ever be a great suitor, which is fine considering I think he can still be a very solid to maybe even a good one. His improvements are a testament to his work ethic, so I do think he will continue to improve on this area of the game. On top of this, his inside scoring is trending towards being elite, so I think just being enough of a threat as a suitor is all he really needs. He shot 71% in the restricted area on 4.1 attempts per game. He shot 61.8% on 3.3 layup attempts per game. He used his strength and length to attack the basket. He's pretty flexible and has good balance as well, which is something he uses to his advantage. And it only takes a few steps for him to get to the basket in both a half court and in a transition sense. So he is a threat in both regards of offense, and that is important because. His half-court offense was a question mark entering the league and he has seemed to answer those questions pretty well. Scotty has the profile to be a good scorer. I don't think he will ever be a great scorer that's this 25 plus point per game guy, but I do think he'd be a very good complimentary scorer. Now it's possible that he does prove me wrong here because looking at his development curve does lead me to believe he could show outlier developments because I have seen outlier developments from those who have similar very development curves like Scotty has, but outlier development is not something you expect to happen even if it wouldn't shock you if it did happen. Regardless, I have seen debate about Scotty's scoring potential, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that he doesn't look like the conventional scorer we see in guys like Cade Cunningham or Jalen Green. He has a very wide base as both a shooter and dribbler. He has some funky movement as well that you don't usually see from a scorer, but at the same time, it really doesn't matter to me if the style of scoring is conventional or not, 
if he gets results, and Scotty gets results, which the numbers and the efficiency back up. I would be concerned with his unconventional style if he was inefficient and didn't get results, but it's not the case, so I don't think it's right to question his scoring potential just because it looks unconventional. Scotty is somebody with the potential to be an elite finisher, great paint score, and a decent to maybe good shooter. To me, that is someone that can be a high teens to low 20s point per game scorer easily for the next 10 years. But it's not just about the scoring with Scotty either, it's also about his passing because he's a really good passer, a better passer than 3.5 assists per game suggests, and 3.5 assists per game isn't even bad for a rookie for it, it's actually pretty good. But his ability suggests that the number could definitely be higher. His low assist per game numbers can be attributed to playing with an all-star point guard and all in being level forward that both can get you 5 plus assists per game, but Scotty has always been a special passer, one of the best passing forward prospects I've ever evaluated. His vision is really good, he's accurate most of the time, and he's pretty creative as well. His scoring ability expanding will only make him more of a threat as a passer. I don't know if we will see a big jump in assists per game this upcoming season, but I do think he can be a 7 plus assist per game guy in this league if given the opportunity. He's that special of a passer. On defense, I would say that Scotty was solid and showed potential to be great. It was the selling point for him entering the league. He was viewed as the best defensive player from his draft class. And I would say that as a rookie, his defense got overshadowed by the fact that Evan Mobley and Herb Jones were legit all-time great rookie defenders, but I still think Scotty can be a high-level defensive player. He can play passing lanes, he can defend multiple positions, bother shots with his long arms, and he has a high motor on defense as well. He basically has everything you need to be an elite defender, and I expect him to trend towards being one of the best defenders in the league. The foundation of Scotty's game to me is, well, his feel for the game. He's extremely smart as a basketball player on both ends of the floor, and with his motor, that makes him a player that can be a leader on both ends of the floor for you team, as well as someone who can be the heart and soul of a contending team one day. Scotty is a player I truly have a hard time setting a ceiling on. It's hard for me to see an outcome that doesn't result with him being an all-star level player, but the question for me is, can he be more than just an all-star? That's where I'm at with him after watching the tape his rookie season. He has so many indicators with his development that suggest that it can get better, and it's difficult for me to look at his development trends and put a cap on what his ceiling can be as a player. What he's shown so far from a skill set standpoint, wiring standpoint, motor standpoint, and physical standpoint make me confident he's going to be a really good player. But I guess for me at least, only time will tell when it comes to how great he can be in his NBA career. But that's the end of this video for me to this point. Thank you so much. Again, if you haven't already, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, be notified whenever I release a video. I make videos about basketball all the time, so if that's something that interests you, I really think you enjoy this channel. And liking and subscribing are the best ways that you can help support the channel, help me grow so I can make more content for you guys in the future. Want to check out other content that I make? I have a video essay channel. Haven't uploaded there in a while, but I do long form video essay style stuff about anime and cartoons over there. So, want to see something that I make that isn't related to basketball but takes a bit more time? You can check out that channel. I have two videos from that channel popping up over here. One of them about Classroom of the Elite, another one about Scooby Doo, Where Are You? Click the icon in the middle to subscribe to this channel and check out more videos if you want to do that that are related to basketball. And YouTube will be recommending a video from this channel on the other side. With that being said, have a nice day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.